Welcome to the Financial Times. Our guest today is Sebastián Piñera, the President of Chile. President Piñera, welcome to the Financial Times. Three seismic events have hit Chile this year. Of course, the trapping and the rescue of the miners that we've all watched. Also, the big earthquake in February, the fifth biggest in history. And then your own election, the first elected president from the right in Chile in 52 years. Which of these three events is going to change Chile the most? Good question. I think that all of them have been extremely significant. The election of the first center-right president in 20 years means a very profound change in our policies. We have set goals which are extremely ambitious to become the first Latin American country within this decade to defeat poverty, overcome underdevelopment. That's a major challenge. And I think that we are in the right path. The earthquake was devastating because it was the fifth worst earthquake in the history of mankind. It was devastating. It cost us a lot of lives. More than 500 people lost their lives. But also it cost us 18% of our GNP in terms of infrastructure destruction. We lost one third of our schools, one third of our hospitals, bridges, airport ports, and we are reconstructing them. And the miners' a search and rescue effort has been so emotional. It has been, it has moved people in a, such a strong way that it, I think that Chile now is a much more united country, stronger country, and better known and more respected worldwide. It's clear that the world's eyes are on Chile after the mining rescue. Can we talk a little bit about Chile's role in the world, in the global economy? Your finance minister yesterday in our pages criticized both the U.S. and China for the currency wars that are now pushing up currencies like the Chilean peso and the currencies of similar countries. Do you think the big powers are pursuing economic policies that are harmful to countries like Chile? I tend to agree with that. I think that they have to coordinate themselves better. Because who is to blame for it? The U.S., because they are running a huge fiscal and current account deficit, or the Chinese that are trying to overvalue the currency to promote their export. I think that the blame should be put in both sides. What's the right response for countries like yours? Are you in favor of capital controls? No. Chile is such an open economy. We have free trade agreements with 52 countries around the world, Europe, the US, Canada, India, China, Korea, that we want to be part of the world. And for that, we want to integrate our economy, not only in the commercial side, but also in, on the financial side. And therefore, we have a flexible exchange rate, and we are not in favor of capital constraint unless we have to face extraordinary conditions. You are now on a trip to promote Chile in Europe, but you are really closer to China. You are across the water, the big ocean, admittedly, but you are across the water from China. Is China not going to be more important for Chile in the future than Europe is? Well, China is now by far the most important trading partner of Chile. They represent like 25% of our exports. And it's growing and growing because they are growing so fast. But for us, Europe means something very special because with Europe, we, we have not only this free trade agreement, we share history, values, principles. And therefore, Europe for us is extremely important. We belong to the Western world, but we want to be part of the universal world. That's why we are working in all the fronts with Europe, with the US, with the Asia Pacific area, and especially with China and India, which are the emerging superpower of the future. Can we pursue China a little bit more? The, uh, the president of the Chileans, Chilean Miners Association just recently encouraged Chinese mining companies to invest in Chile. Would you welcome greater Chinese involvement in the Chilean mining sector? We welcome all foreign investment if they respect our local laws. And China has not invested uh, in Chile yet. Maybe they they are used to do joint ventures with public companies. And in Chile, we have basically a private economy. But if they want to, or they decide to invest in Chile, they will be welcome. Let's talk about the domestic economy and the domestic laws, but you, because you're suggesting that reforms are on the way. The Chilean model has been celebrated as a successful free market model. Uh, and yet we saw that accidents like the one we have just witnessed are possible. Does the Chilean model have to change? You, can, you always have to be improving your model. Of course, we will stick to basic uh, pillars of our model. 
our commitment with democracy and human rights and the state of law, our commitment to a free, open market, competitive economy, our commitment with a strong public sector to fight poverty and inequalities. But we have to change because we have to add to those pillars what are needed or what is needed now to be part of this society of information and knowledge. We need to improve the quality of our education substantially and in a very fast way. We have, we need to to invest much more in science and technology, and we need to promote more innovation and entrepreneurship. So this and sounds like more public spending, is that right? Excuse me? This sounds like more public spending. No, no. That's an old way of thinking. It doesn't mean more public spending. It, it means basically more private investment in those areas. But the public sector has to create the conditions in order to allow our economy to enter this new age of the Society of Information and Technology. And therefore, we are promoting more investment in science and technology, more innovation, more entrepreneurship, a more flexible society to be able to adjust to a world that is changing so rapidly. You've talked about a new deal after the mining rescue. Is that a new deal for miners? Is it a more general workers' rights regulation package? It's a new deal in general terms, in the sense that we, will, we are revising and re-examining all our standards and procedures to protect lives, safety, health, and dignity of our workers. That's why we will propose, probably next week, to Congress a new deal. And we are adapting the OECD standards in terms of safety, in terms of labor conditions for all the Chilean workers. Can we talk a bit about the politics, the challenges to implementing your program? You've made much out of the unity of purpose uh, that we saw in the mining rescue, and you've suggested that that sort of unity is what it will take to bring uh, Chile to developed country status. How are you going to sustain that popular unity? We've already, isn't it already fraying? We see protests from the miners who lost their jobs, weren't trapped but lost their jobs and haven't got paid. We see protests from the earthquake victims who feel attention has gone away from them. How are you going to sustain that unity? Well, of course. It's a free society, so people are not only they are they have the right to protest, but I would I would say that the unity in Chile is very very strong. It's a very strong feeling that we have to unite, to be united, in order to address the huge challenges that we are going to face in the near future, to be to defeat poverty, to overcome and development, to create opportunities to do the major and structural reforms in the education and, and health system, to start winning our war on crime and drugs. For that, we need unity. Because at the end of the day, unity is the source of our strength, and division is the source of our weakness. Finally, Mr. President, can you promise the children of those miners we saw rescued, can you promise them that they will not face the same, condition, the same conditions as their parents when they grow up? Yeah, I cannot guarantee that there will be no more accidents because that's something that doesn't depend on us. But I can guarantee you that the children will face better conditions in terms of safety. We are increasing, we are improving our standards and procedures, but we are increasing also our capacity to supervise those standards. So I, I, the answer is yes, their children will face safer conditions and better work conditions than their parents. That's part of progress. President Sebastian Piñera, thank you very much. Thank you.